There's a few guys that's becoming members. And uh, with that, we are giving them also a, a letter with an encouraging word. As all of you who became members already received, I believe. And with that letter, I know you've uh, put it somewhere and uh, you have it with you. And um, you're making that part of your life, I believe so, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay. So in that letter, we mentioned five scriptures. And I quickly want to go through that. But before doing that, I just want to go with a word on the calendar for this month. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Everybody say, 111. I'll say that again. 111. Okay. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. In some of the other translations, it's saying faith is a title deeds. <clears throat> the assurance. The assurance of what we hope for. Now a lot of us, a lot of people out there, they have a lot of faith. People with a major lot of faith. That's people that believe that there's no God. Um, to believe that there's no God, you need a lot of faith. Because uh, for sure, my brother, my sister, uh, hello. Uh, there's such a lot out there that you just know that you know there's a God. So you need a lot of faith. To believe that there's no God. There's a lot of faith out there. There's people that believe if I blow myself up in the midst of a lot of people, I will have a better place in heaven. There's a lot of people believing in a lot of freaky stuff. And with that faith, they're not saved. But with that type of faith, they're going to hell. May God have mercy on us. Amen. So, for us to be saved by faith and through faith, and that we will walk as the righteous by faith, it's a certain type of faith. You with me? It's the substance, the surety of things hoped for. There's a certain ingredients in our faith. And that Sureness is coming from here. The foundation of your faith is from the word. As you write it down, you remember Romans 10 verse 17, eh? Faith comes by hearing, hearing from the? So, again, according to Ephesians 2 8, that you also write down, is uh, faith is a gift from God. So, there's a certain faith, and it's a gift from God. Because it's God's grace for you to come into a place of understanding the word. And based on understanding the word that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that you can be saved and not perish, but have eternal life. When you took that type of faith with that ingredients, the biggest miracle happened in your life. The biggest miracle that can happen in your life happened already. You became a child of God. From the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Are you with me? Hello? So with all of that, from that place, I say, may God help you to understand what faith is all about and what type of faith you must have. You can have faith that that man will never change, that, that girl that she will never change. And then you speak forth according to that. You put words with your faith. And it is... And it is a faith that destroys. It's not a faith that sets you free, that gives you a breakthrough, that you as the righteous in Christ, with stature in Christ, can walk with that faith. There's a faith that will honor God. There's a faith that we can have that will bring a, a victory over, over the world. Hallelujah. Are you with me? May God help you. May God help you. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now what are the things, my brother, my sister, that you hope for? You hope for certain things to happen. And that is called faith. No. The surety, the assurance that you have, that things that you hope for will happen. That is faith. Only if the essence of hope is Christ. 
like we said, Christ, our eternal hope. So for the things that I hope for to happen, if Christ, the hope, is not in the things that I hope for, it is not faith from God. Faith from God is based in the word and from the word. Are you with me? It's from the word of God. So if Christ, the hope, cannot be seen in the things that I hope for, then that faith is not from God. So you need to make sure that what you believe and trust God for to happen, that you can Christ, see Christ in that destiny. You can see Christ in what he wants to do in that situation. Are you with me? Let it be so in Jesus' name. Let him be the center point. Let him be the assurance. Let him be the firm foundation of your faith. And you know, then when sometimes you step out in faith and something doesn't happen, it's okay. If you step out in faith and some things didn't work, work out, it's not that you will lose your faith because you fall back in a place of hope. You fall back into that place of hope. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. That what we do not see. God can give you the breakthrough. Amen. Are you taking that? You men, you're writing down by faith in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay. So in the five scriptures, I want to give you Amos 3 verse 3. Amos 3 verse 3. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Walk together. When we're talking about becoming even a member in the church, it's we agreed to walk together. Now, in this walking together, that was what God wanted to do with Adam and Eve. He wanted to walk with them. So God was calling, Adam, Adam, where are you? It's not like God was confused about where Adam was. He knew exactly. Hello? But he wanted Adam to respond to him. He wanted Adam to respond to him, to come and walk with. God knows exactly where you are and his grace will be there. But he's calling your name, he's calling you to walk with him. But then also in the church, in the congregation, in the spiritual family, God is putting you, placing you at this stage. He's calling you to walk with. He didn't say, now it's Adam's turn and then it's Eve's turn that we will walk. <clears throat> no. For them to walk with him. For us to walk with him. So there is us walking with God. Are you with me? But will you not first agree? And in the agreeing is like to say, Ish, in spite of the mistakes, in spite of the weaknesses, in spite of the things not so always so lack or so right in the church, with that brother or that sister or that leader or whoever, I choose to walk together. Hello? Because I know God is the best for me. And this is where God has placed me. Now, we'll two walk together unless they've agreed. Now, the problem is, sometimes I agree with rejection. Because of something that somebody said. Okay, hello, you are focusing. Because of what somebody said. And you took the rejection, and more and more, you agreed with rejection. And now you and the rejection walk together. You and the rejection walk together. And you will agree, where two or more agree in my name, or in whose name? In the name of rejection. It will come to pass also. My question to you is, you agreed to walk with what? Or with who? Because you are walking with someone. You're walking with someone. You're walking with a demon of compromise or a demon of religion or a demon of lies or a demon of whatever. Or you're walking with the Holy Spirit, hello, and with certain people. But certain people walking with certain demons, you won't believe it how quick they will find one another. And walking with, this, with one another that has the same issue, same problem, same compromise same rubbish happening in their lives they are just like this and they're walking together hello 
Now, if that is so for the demonic, how much more if we can do it with the Spirit of God? Amen? Are you with me? Because if you agree to walk with your issue, or you agree to walk with criticism, or you agree to walk with, with judgment against people, you're walking with your own self-righteousness, how right you are and how wrong the others are. At the end of the day, you will walk with demons. Hello? And with people who have the same demons. The Bible says to the church, to Christians, don't have fellowship with demons. So you can have an intimate walking with a demon. You are saved, you're going to heaven. But you're walking with demons. You have fellowship with demons. Or I can decide, no. I'm going to walk with Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to show me with whom must I walk with. And if God showed you that you are walk, walking with us, we are walking with you. And there is a certain destiny for us together. Then may God in his grace let us have an expectation that God's going to do a major thing. Amen. Amen. Ah, let it be so. Second one, Matthew 18, verse 19 and 20. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for it, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. If two of you on earth agree, it will be done, it will be done by my Father in heaven. My brother, my sister, we are, if when we are in a congregation together, when we come together to sing, let's say like that, there's a song, let's say, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. And you are in a, in a bad place. You are in a, not in a good space. But with the 20% faith in you, the 20% faith in you, to surrender everything next to you. He's a guy with 80% faith. Next to him, 70%, 90% faith. All together, when two or more agree. Life and death in the power of the tongue. In the power of the tongue. Not life and death in the power of the fact that your faith is perfect. Hello? So where two or more agree in my name. So that man with excellent faith, that lady with strong faith, that lay man with, with faith in stability. Agreeing with four that is really shaking in their faith. That's really in a bad space with their faith. All of them pushing ahead. Because all together agree. Even the one, 20%, one, 80% in their faith. They can all have the breakthrough. Hello? And that is where we, why it's so important, even in the singing together, where it's commanded by God that in the congregation we will come together and we will worship Him, we will praise Him. We will be with Him in what we do. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So I have that type of expectation. And especially when you feel irritated. Let's say I'm saying now something, you know? And you feel irritation, frustration, of, yeah, 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 I've heard this again. Or I, I can be in the flesh and I speak to others while we are actually ministering the word. And I wara wara this and I wara wara that. No. Let us push together. You, you take it by faith. When you feel frustrated, maybe it's just because you're going to have the breakthrough now. And the time of your biggest breakthrough will be the time that the enemy will bring the biggest frustration in you so that you will look at the giants and come on man Israel you went through everything everything and at the moment at the Jordan you are the most frustrated about everything and you say I've we've had it we've had it we are finished we fire Moses, we kill Joshua, we kill Caleb, and we go back to Egypt. We are finished. Because they walked, had fellowship with a lot of rubbish, irritations, this, that, that. So you can find people to walk with, to agree with you on stuff that can become a stronghold against God's word. Hello? Or you can decide, no, this is not the way it's going to happen. So when we come together, when we hear the word, and there's 20 that agree, where two or more agree, 
agree. Not everybody has the best faith. But the strength in the body, the strength in the body, when the man with 80% faith, 90% faith, and 10% faith agree, all three can have the same breakthrough because of the protection in the body. In the body. Sheep standing against the wolf. It's not the faith of the sheep to overcome the wolf and the lion. The protection is in the body. Is in the body. Not just that the sheep don't walk away from the shepherd. Because sometimes the shepherd stands one side and he's watching the sheep. That they are all together. And not one wandering off from the shepherd. No, wandering off from the flock. Hello? God has called us together. There's protection, there's strength in the being together. Especially if there's weakness in my life. Hallelujah. Are you with me? For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Uh, church attendance by God, 100%. When there's two attending the service, God says, I'm there also. <laughs> Hello? So is God not there when you're alone? No, 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 no. He's in you. He's working in a certain way. But God wants to manifest himself in a very special way when we come together. He wants to manifest himself in a different way when we come together. Hello? So God is ready for a church service. Always. And he's waiting for two to come together in his name. Who's coming together in the name of Jesus? I want to be there. Because I want to manifest myself in a unique way. More than just in and through that, uh, that guy as a person, as a child. Are you with me? Let's come with that type of expectation. Let's come with that expectation. Not because I like this one or I don't like this one or this or the music is too dead or that or the sermon is too short or this or that. You know? Are you with me? Hallelujah. Okay. So let's be excited as God is excited when we come together that God wants to do something unique. Tell your neighbor, God wants to do something unique when we come together. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Because the enemy is very excited. He can do something. But when there's two, the one wants to go and smoke. But if there's another one that wants to go with M and M, and the devil can present himself in a very special way. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? So it works with compromise. If the one is depressed, the other one is depressed, when they can come together and, and, and enjoy one another's depression by saying, oh, I understand your heart. You know, um, the enemy can manifest himself in a very precious way. Let it be so in the right way, in Jesus' name, in the right way with Christ. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. That's also part of what we have in the body. The body is a unit through it is made up of many parts. And though all its parts are many. They form one body. So it is with Christ. So it is with Christ. Everybody the same, it's one big blob. One big blob, boring. Blob. One. Everything must be the same. But in the variety, we mustn't be threatened by the variety. We mustn't be feeling jealous. In, because God is using this man in this way and not you in that way. Find your identity in Christ. In Christ. Hello, so that you can grow up and mature in the body of Christ. <sighs> Are you with me? Are you with me? Remember Christ in me, me in Christ? Uh, you can ignore the break. Peter, you look the most holy here. Come. Okay. It's now, not pity in me, please, Lord, have mercy. But Christ in me, and me in Christ. The fullness of Christ dwells in me, in my spirit. Amen. But, 
And that life that is in Christ, God shows me through the word, through the Holy Spirit, the fullness of this life, Christ in me. Amen. But my life in Christ, in the body of Christ, my life is hidden, the word says. The excellent life that I can have on earth through the body of Christ in the nations with my work, with my destiny, it is hidden in Christ. So I have Christ in me, I'm going to heaven. I can mess up my life, I can mess everything that God has for me. God's grace will be there, I will have the manna, I will have the quails, I will have the protection against the sun, against the cold in the night. Yeah, but I will have nothing of my destiny. Because in Christ, God has an excellent, excellent, excellent plan and dream for my life. But it is hidden in the body. And only if I'm linked in the body and understand the body of Christ, then my life that is in Christ can be revealed through the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? So that's so important why we need to understand the functioning of the body of Christ. <sighs> you met me? Once in worship I said to God, and when leading the worship, God, when I would see the picture of that, that lady um, washing your feet with her tears and drying with her hair, and it is impossible, but in any case, then... How will I be able to touch you more? And like she touched your feet. And God said, when you touch my son and my daughter, it's like the you touch my feet. Because they are my body. So how you touch your brother and your sister with your words, with your heart, with a physical touch, you are touching the body of Christ. Do it in the context of respect. Because you worship the one that is living in him. You not worship him. You worship the one living in him. Because you know who's the head of the body. Thank you. Are you with me? Oh, may God help us to understand the body. And how to live in an accurate way. You know what I said about my stompy, eh? I cut it off. When I cut it off. However, how the crocodile bit it off, you know, he didn't get out of the river and go and lift in Pofader. He rot and he died. Okay, we need, we need one another. So don't get and walk with a familiar demonic religious spirit. And, oh, they are to this, they are to that, they are to that. Because I'm here and they are there. Pride becomes, comes before the for. And the one that does not need the other one, that's the definition of a cancer cell. A cancer cell can grow, can move as it pleases. A cell in the body is linked in a certain way. Oh, but I'm now under the strength. I'm under, you know, it's all these rules. It's all these rules. If this muscle doesn't do that, then that cannot happen. The finger cannot just move on its own. It's not possible. The finger thought he was free. No, he is not free. He is free to understand the body and have the benefit of the rest of the body working for its advantage to do certain things. Are you with me? So may God help you. That we will understand. There's, let's say there's no cancer cell. In Jesus name. Let it be so for you. Okay. Next one. 1 Peter 2, five. You also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now we are here as a body. And yes, some guys can becoming a member is to say I'm giving myself to be built into. You also, like living stones, are being built into. You are being built into. So that is what somebody do to you. You are not building yourself into. Hello. So it's not my human right for what I say. I do this and I do that. My human right is that I allow others to build me into a spiritual house. 
the living stone, don't hop along, hang, 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 and jump into the wall. You won't believe it. Never happened. Let somebody take the stone, and with God's wisdom, we pray, build you in the, into the right place. No, I'm not a people person, and people, they drain me, you know. But there's uh, Mr. Livingstone, there's two living stones underneath you, one close here, and one close there, and another one, and another one to on top, you know. Um, and when you build accurately, and they are, if they are accurately positioned, the wall is strong. And the house is strong. If they are accurately built into and with one another. You're not a living stone to be a living stone. You're a living stone to be built into a house. So that in the spiritual house, you will make certain sacrifices. What are we talking? Offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. What are we talking about? A father, he has 29 sons. And they always fight with one another. There's always issues. There's always stuff. There's always this. There's always this one hurt that one. This one is the point, disappointed by that one. What a blessing to the Father. Oh. What is the spiritual sacrifice in the house that you cannot bring unto the Lord on your own? It's the fact of how you behave towards your brother and your sister. How you love them. How you respect them. How you forgive them. How you don't judge them. How you don't put them in a box. How you don't think you are spiritually more religious, better, actually demonic then, than the other one. How you're not full of pride. How you don't have your selfish, individualistic justification why you will not do certain things, but do other things. Now, when there's not all the fighting and the dad must sort out the whole time all the issues between all the people, all his sons and his daughters, because they always have an issue of somebody and always somebody hurts somebody else and they must work through it through course after course after course after course after sermon after meeting after meeting. Hello. But if they maybe can bring a spiritual sacrifice, even if it's a sacrifice to forgive him, a sacrifice to love her. A sacrifice to give grace. A sacrifice to serve this one. And I don't entertain my fellowship with demons where I can justify why I'm not really involved. But doing my own thing. With three demons clapping hands and saying, we are so proud of you. Huh? But that you sacrifice in the name of Christ with humility. With humility. I'm there. And I do what I do to my brother and my sister as if unto the Lord. That is called spiritual sacrifices in the spiritual house acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. It can only be through Christ Jesus. Otherwise, it's not possible. But he will give me the strength. He will give me the wisdom. He will give me his name so that I'm able to do that. Hello? And bring that spiritual sacrifice. And what amazing blessing can it be for a father when he sees how his children love one another. There, protect one another, enjoy one another, play with one another, enjoy life with one another. That is bringing a blessing. That is bringing an acceptable sacrifice unto the Lord. Amen. And that's why we are built into a spiritual house. Not because I have a demonic religious opinion that they are not so good, or they are not this, or they are not that, or they are not that. May you be set free in Jesus' name. Not one of you guys, but I mean in principle. Amen. Okay, and the last one. Psalm 133. Psalm. There's 150 of them. Okay, 133. <laughs> How good and pleasant. Everybody say good and pleasant. Oh, say it like the Portuguese with his pizza man. How good and pleasant. Yeah, man. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. When they, when they come together in a meeting and they don't have to uh, have a hell of a lot of issues with one another. But just two issues. Ah, oh, how good and pleasant. If there's only two issues. Oh, no, no. Not come together in a meeting. When they live together in unity. Doesn't mean everybody must go and live in the David cave. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. 
But I'm saying living together. Oh man, that's something else than just sometimes having a meeting with one another. Hello? Living together, because that was God's plan. That was God's plan. Is it not our Father's home? What we always talk about. Because at the end of the day, God's dream, God's heaven, that is beyond the heaven that he has now, is to live with you and me. Is the new Jerusalem, the city of our God, city of the living God, where the nations will be the city and God himself will be the light, according to Revelation. That's the definition of the new heaven and the new earth. It's the nations where God will dwell among them. So if somebody loves me, he will obey my teaching. He will have a certain quality love. If somebody loves me, if he really loves me, he will have a certain quality love. And that quality will not be cheap. It will be, he will obey my teaching. Because his love will be genuine. And then my father will love him. Not like before the time he hated him. But it will be real to him. He will understand how to experience the father's love. There will be a flow of heart to heart. Father to son. Son to father. Father to daughter, daughter to father. That love will be real. And we, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, will come and we will make our home. Make our home. How Good, pleasant, when they live together, when they dwell together in unity, when they make their home with one another, that they are at home with one another. We are at home with one another. We can live together. That's God's ultimate dream. That's the definition of his heaven. If you want to show forth something of his heaven in the church, in the family of God, it's how you will dwell together. It's like precious oil poured from the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It's as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows, commands his blessing, even life forevermore. Blessings that has eternal value. Just leave it there. Great. Are you with me? It is like what? It is like the oil brought forth. That is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When you can dwell together, when two or three can dwell together without issues, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will be there to break the yokes. Anointing that will break the yokes. So the yoke will be easy, burden will be light. When you have issues with people, you remember in your life, long ago you had, now you have nothing. But long ago, you remember? Then, it's getting hard. Life then is complicated. Things, yeah, you get drained with, from your energy and that what, and your perspective. And to enjoy life and find the, the joy in life sometimes can be really an issue when you have the issues. But when through God's grace we can learn how to dwell together, then the anointing will be there. Anointing. We two agree, more agree, other anointing will flow. When they can live together, not just have a fake yes, yes, smile, but live together in unity, the hand of God will be there. Because the oil is also a picture of the hand of the Father that will be there. Hand of the Father will be on you. When you dwell together in unity with your brother and your sister, the hand of the Father will be on you. You will experience the Father's hand in, a, in an amazing way like you have not experienced. Get that in line. It's not just having your time with God. You better have it. Yes, your time with the Word. You better have it. Like we said a thousand times. But in the body, if you don't understand, you don't get into that place how to live and to dwell with your brother and your sister in unity. God says, there. His hand, the Father's hand, will be on you in so many ways. And there God will command, command, the other translation saying command the blessing. Blessing will serve you. It's not just Dunei, Dunei's blessing that will serve her. And, no. Blessings, that what is coming from heaven that God has for you. So many things. But we can so work hard to have the blessing because we want to dwell among the blessing. 
You know, so that one day in your life, when you have all these blessings, all this and all that and all that, and you are living in those blessings, <sighs> live and dwell with your brother and your sister, your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, your pastor. Um, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Give yourself, hello, bring that sacrifice unto the Lord. For him to be pleased, for him to be happy, for him to enjoy it. Hello? For him to enjoy it. You do it for him. Amen? So that he can enjoy it so much that he says, That's my home. That's where I want to stay. That's where I want to stay. God is with you, he loves you, he's in you, he's faithful. Even if you're unfaithful, he will stay faithful, he will never leave you, he will never forsake you. But to create that space. Here, O oh Lord, have I prepared for you a home. Amen. And it's not me alone, it's, it's us. And in that context, oh please men, let us live in such a way with one another. That God can just command the blessing because his hand is there. It's like the dew of Hermon. Now that is like the freshness of the new opportunity. Tomorrow morning, the dew is there. Why? It's declaring the freshness of the new opportunity that God has for you. Oh man, his anointing will be there, the Father's hand will be there, but also the freshness tomorrow morning for a new opportunity for you will be there. Because through the blood, yes, you are forgiven. But then start and see how God is giving you a fresh opportunity through the body that supports one another, for the body that is there for one another. Hello? Even Ukraine, Russia, in this, these days, the, hopefully in Jesus' name, the body will rise up and stand with one another. And stand with one another. It was amazing on Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera, they're not necessarily so Christian. Um, you know? And they just put this Al Jazeera news from the, the Middle East. Where is it now? Antarctica. What's that place in now? Doha, um, Al Jazeera, and uh, they're just showing where the people get off in Poland, all from Ukraine, and they're leaving it there, but there's these guys, the, the, the younger people giving out food and stuff, and there's a, just this voice, he's, and he's preaching the gospel, Jesus Christ did this for you, and da, da, da. if you accept and then you give this and do that, and then pray with and I'm just watching all this era news. And this is what they are showing. Even where you raise your hand and they raise their hand, some of the people in the row, and I'll just hear is giving the news. This is news. People receiving Christ in the rows after they came from Ukraine into Poland. Ah, oh, man, that was wonderful news to watch. And especially that I'll just hear it didn't take it off, you know? Yeah, hallelujah. May the churches be relevant. Amen. Spoken to a guy, Valera, that studied with us many decades ago from Ukraine. Ah, oh, it was just such a blessing to speak to him yesterday. And uh, yeah, and how he's at and walking with Christ and how him and his wife already helped um, people. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to take time with that. But praise the Lord for that. And I also spoke to our guys in Austria, where Eugene, where they came from. And uh, we pray for them, that God will show them. If we can help them uh, through them to the Romanian contacts, where a lot of people already from Ukraine went through. Romania, where we had a lot of contacts. And some of our guys, they went there for a year. Even Grant Luther went there for a while. And, um, yeah, that we must see how must we financially maybe help through the contacts that we have there and the church in Austria with Gregor and Deandre. And maybe they, they are talking today to the church to find out if there's one or two or three that want to go there. And that maybe we must pray, is there one or two of our guys that must go to Romania and to go and help, physically go and help, um, 
yeah. If everybody is always waiting for everybody, then what, what must happen? But so they got, the churches are making a major impact. And may they have a major, 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 even more impact. Everything is shaken. And what is, what is the world seeing? With Corona, they saw, hey, your life is not secure. You are not secure without Christ. What are they seeing with this? And people say, it can be third world war. Just like tomorrow, let Mr. Mr. can you decide, okay, we're pushing some knoppies. And world war can be out there. What is sure in your life? Christ. Christ. And, and is it not the prophetic word for the nations, like we said, end of last year? This year, we see hope. The nations must receive hope. Oh man, come on. Everything secure, everything nice. Your friends, your family is just across the border in Russia. We are in Ukraine. And the next moment, let's blast everything up. Even old people, young kids. Hello. May God help us in Jesus' name. Are you with me? So I'm ending with that. I say, my brother, my sister, even as some of you guys become members, let's do this under the grace of God and say, God, we want to serve your purposes and we want to love you in such a way. For the world will know that we are his disciples when we know a lot about the Bible. No. The world will know that we are his disciples if we have love for one another. How we commit and how we dwell together, that makes the whole difference. Thank you, Father, that you come and you just do a great work in our lives. Uh, Lord, forgive us for faking relationships. Forgive us for not giving our hearts in relationships full out, Lord. Forgive us in that, Lord. And Father, even as we will have communion now, I pray that you will just guide us through your Spirit. Guide us through your Spirit to see that what you have for our lives. Thank you for that, Father. Set us free to become the dwelling place for you, Lord. Give us your wisdom to be wise builders, to build a place, your home in an accurate way, by loving our brothers and sisters, giving them grace, forgiving them, supporting them, praying for them, guiding one another, being there for one another. We thank you that you just come and you do that in Jesus' name. Amen.